Welcome to the Machine Learning Crash Course. In our previous video, we delved into predicting real estate prices, emphasizing the importance of labels in training models, particularly in supervised learning scenarios. In this video, we are revisiting the real estate example, but we'll focus on understanding of features and labels in depth. So, let's get started. Features are the building blocks for training models in machine learning tasks and especially important for supervised learning like predicting real estate prices we saw in the previous video. Let's revisit the real estate examples, but this time focusing on features. Imagine you are a data scientist working for a real estate company and you want to build a model to predict the selling price of houses. Here is how features play a role. There are different types of features. Continuous features represent numerical values that can take on any value within a range. For example, in real estate, it includes square footage, which is the total living area of the house, or the lot size, which is the total area of the land the house sits on, or maybe a distance to park, such as how far the house is from the nearest park. Categorical features represent distinct categories or options, and the example includes maybe the number of bedrooms, which could be 2, 3, 4, etc., or number of bathrooms, this could be 1.5, 2.0, or 3.5, depending on the presence of half baths and maybe school rating. This could be ranked from poor to excellent, assuming a predefined rating system is already there. And finally, we'll have ordinal features, which represents categories with specific order or ranking. For example, a house age could be one of the categories. You might group houses into categories like new, which is zero to five years, a mid age, maybe six to 20 years, or older, which is 21 plus years. Now, the quality and selection of features directly affect how well your model predicts house prices. So choosing relevant features that capture important aspects of a house will lead to more accurate predictions. And so we would also need feature engineering because sometimes raw data needs processing to create useful features. For instance, you might combine the number of bedrooms and bathrooms into a single total bedrooms plus bathrooms feature. Okay. So we also talked about labels in my previous video. Features and labels work together to train a model to make predictions. Features are the what and labels are the why. Features describe the characteristics or properties of your data points. Think of them as ingredients in a recipe. Labels on the other hand represent the desired outcome you want to predict. They are the dish you are trying to create with those ingredients. So labels guide the learning process, especially in supervised learning. The model is trained on pairs of features and labels. The model sees the features or ingredients and learns how they relate to the labels, which is the desired outcome. For example, in our real estate case, the features could be square footage, number of bedrooms, or the distance to the park, whereas the label could be selling price of the house. By looking at many houses or data points with these features and their corresponding selling prices, which are the labels, the model learns the relationship between features and how they influence house prices. Just imagine you are learning to bake a cake. The recipe, which is the features, tells you the ingredients like flour, sugar, and eggs, and their quantities. But you also need to know the desired outcome or label. That is, what kind of a cake are you trying to bake? Is it a chocolate cake, a vanilla cake, etc.? So by following the recipe or features and understanding the desired outcome or label, you can successfully bake the cake and make the prediction. Now, the type of label you have significantly impacts the kind of predictions your model will make. Here is a breakdown of the two main types along with an additional one. Starting with continuous labels or regression. These labels represent numerical values allowing continuous spectrum. So the model is trained with continuous labels that are used for regression tasks. They predict a value within a range rather than a specific category. So in our real estate case, the selling price is a continuous label. The model will predict a range of possible selling prices for a new house based on its features such as square footage, bedroom, etc. Other examples of continuous labels include predicting weather temperature, forecasting stock prices, or estimating customer lifetime value. Now, categorical labels or classification represent distinct categories or options. There is a clear separation between each category. So models trained with the categorical labels are used for classification tasks. They predict the class a new data point belongs to. So if the label in our real estate case were house type, such as bungalow or colonial, 
it would be a categorical label because the model would predict the specific house type category a new house falls into based on its features. Here are some of the examples of categorical labels. It could be spam email detection such as it's a spam or not spam or image classification such as is it a cat, dog or an aeroplane or sentiment analysis such as if a specific news is positive, negative or maybe a natural review. And finally, ordinal labels or multi-class classification represent categories with a specific order or ranking. There is a natural order to the categories, unlike nominal categorical labels which have distinct options without inherent order. Ordinal labels can be used for multi-class classification task. The model predicts the class a new data points belongs to, considering the order or ranking of the categories. An ordinal label could be customer satisfaction with levels like very dissatisfied, dissatisfied, neutral, satisfied and very satisfied. The model would predict the level of customer satisfaction for a new interaction based on past data. So, the type of label you have depends on the nature of your prediction problem. And here are some pointers. If you want to predict a numerical value within a range, use a continuous label and train a regression model. If you want to predict a specific category a data point belongs to, use a categorical label and train a classification model. And if you have ordered categories, consider using an ordinal label for multi-class classification. By understanding these different label types and their corresponding prediction task, you can effectively choose the right approach for your supervised learning problem. Features and labels work together to train supervised learning models. Features provide the what and labels dictate the why. The why aspects highlight the purpose and direction labels give to features. Features on their own are just data points. The labels provide the context that transforms them into something the model can learn from to meet the desired goal. So basically, here are the key takeaways about features and labels. Features are the observations used to train the model. They represent different characteristics or aspects of the data you are working with. They can be continuous, such as numerical values, categorical, such as distinct options, or ordinal, which are ranked categories. Choosing the right features is crucial for building an accurate model. In some cases, you might need to engineer new features from raw data to improve the model's performance. Speaking of labels, labels represent the target outcome or what you want your model to predict. They provide the ground truth during the supervised learning process. The type of label, such as continuous or categorical, determines whether your problem is regression task such as predicting a continuous value or a classification task such as predicting a category. Ordinal labels introduce an element of ranking or order into categorical classification task. In essence, features provide the model with the information it needs to learn, while labels guide the model towards the specific prediction you want it to make. By understanding features, labels and their role in machine learning, you can build better models for tasks like real estate price prediction. <laughs>